Hello Physics, I'm going to show you how to set up your lab notebook so we don't have to worry about it in class. The way you're going to do this is, I assume most of you have your lab notebook. Um, as you might imagine, your name will go here. Please put your name, full name, first and last. Please put the period at which you are in and the course. Now this is just to make sure that if your lab notebook gets misplaced, we know exactly where it's supposed to be and how to find you. Um, it does not matter if you have graph or paper in terms of the notebook as long as you have it. I did say graph is better, but you're not penalized if you don't. So once you do that, just like chemistry, you're going to create a table of contents. So when you create the table of contents, please use a straight line and write the physics table of contents. And please write the date, experiment number, name of lab, and pages. Now the date is going to be the date at which you complete your lab, so your first lab will be tomorrow, so that would be this. If you are absent or not present during the lab, put the date that you did the lab. This is about what you did. It's for your organization. This is going to be experiment number one, and tomorrow is the name of the lab is the RAMP lab for your AP Physics. We'll try to keep them simple. Your first lab will start on the first page and to, you know, of course, whatever page that you have here. And then you'll follow this trend as you go, of course, as each lab we do. Now, when you number the pages, if, you know, for example, this is your lab notebook and this is the cover here. Call that the cover. Cover. There we go. Your table of contents is the first page. Now, you're going to start numbering not on the table of contents page, that's different from chemistry. You're going to flip, you know, turn the page, if you will, and this is what you'll see a blank page here. Hold on, I'm writing the word blank. I want you to start numbering here, and this is where your first lab goes. So leave one full. So this is a, a blank page, one full blank page, unnumbered. That's for your table of contents. So start numbering there. Um, you may use pen or pencil for lab. Um, does not matter to me as long as you are using a black or blue ink or something that is not super hard to read. If it's yellow, you can see it hurts your eyes and it's, it's not really helpful. So please use something like black or blue. Next, after you do your table of contents, all your labs are going to have at least this general format. First, you're going to title your lab. So in this case, it's going to be the RAMP lab. I just got to finish that. Well, I'll finish it in a second. Um, you should have the title. You should list on learning goals or purposes and draw a diagram of the setup. And that will always be true for whatever lab. So for instance, if we go here, your First lab should start on the first page and you should number it one, ramp lab, and underline it. Leave a little space, you don't have to leave a huge space, but then I, like you, I would like you to write the word purpose and then number one and two to determine the relationship between position and velocity and determine the acceleration of the ball. Now the point of this again is to keep you organized. Um, as you do the lab, I want you to focus on these points. These are exactly what I want you to get out of the lab. Yep, there's the bell. Next, what I'd like you to do is draw a diagram of your lab setup. Now, your diagram should represent a summary of what you did. So, summarize. Mrs. Coco, could you dial 241, please? Mrs. Coco, 241. Your lab in a drawing. And I also want you to be able to label what you've measured. So for instance, in your lab, what will be useful is you're going to have a ramp and, you know, please draw it a little better than I am. This is a terrible ramp. And it's on a stack of books or something. This is horrible. Oh boy. That's what happens when you use this Moodle. Not Moodle, what is this called? Moby. That's it. I'm just going to fix this right here because it's bothering me. All right and you're going to have a ball and draw if it's in motion please draw a vector or an arrow to show that it's moving and label it V to show that it's moving down the ramp 
And we know that we're going to be measuring a distance, as position is what we're measuring, and the velocity. Now we're going to measure the velocity using the photo gate. So you could draw in the photo gate, something like this, which goes to the computer, and this is going to measure velocity. So if anyone were to look at this, they could see that you are measuring the position, the velocity, etc. You could use other tools like the protractor, etc. But you want to somehow summarize your lab using that. Um, labeling your measurements. If there's any fixed measurements, measurements that are not changing, you label them with actual values. So for instance, say this is 0.25 meters or the length of this, the true, the, the whole length. I know I'm drawing over it, but don't, don't do that, but just to save on time. So you want to also label measurements and fixed measurements. Anything that's pertinent to your lab. This is how I'll grade you each time. Um, this is the lab rubric. At the end of your lab, you need to paste this into your lab notebook. You'll be given one of these in your first lab, but then you'll have to either download this or get it from the classroom. You could get it in the classroom from the shelf on the right where it has all of your um, supplies. It's actually on your left, but that's okay. So what am I measuring here in terms of your score? your format, making sure you have everything including your table of contents, numbered pages, all the required things like data tables, calculations units, any extra things, that's what lab format is. Making sure your diagram is appropriate, so you have to summarize your lab. If you're missing any components or it's not complete, you will lose points or lose credit. Your calculations is another thing I will look for. You have to have all of your calculations regardless of how mundane they are. Anything that proves what you're doing or emphasizes your point. The only calculation that, uh, that is unnecessary is an average calculation, but otherwise you need to show all of your calculations. Units must have units in all of your work. Your data has no presentation errors. Your graphs, your charts, anything that you have has no errors. There is they are labeled, they are complete, etc. Um, another thing is all your measurements are accurate. What I mean by this is that if you're measuring the height of the table, the height of the table is not 20 feet. That's incorrect. And the fact that you put that there without thinking about it shows that you weren't thinking about the lab. So you need to make sure that your measurements are reasonable, I guess it should be, not accurate, but reasonable. And lastly, did you get the lab? Using the purpose of the lab, to, based on your organization and analysis, did you actually show a sophisticated interpretation of the lab? So you're going to show this. This is kind of like an overall grade. And when you do everything you're supposed to do, that's an appropriate grade. This is a 2. If you have everything I asked for and it works. A sophisticated grade is when you go beyond what I asked for, giving me extra explanations organizing your data more clearly, going the extra mile. That's a sophisticated grade. This will be pasted, like I said, at the end of your notebook and then at, yes, there we go. Let's say you get a 30, yeah. All labs are the same amount of points, whether it's a hard lab or easy lab. That just keeps things standard. So, like I said, all labs are 30 points paste the rubric at the end. Um, unless otherwise stated, assume all labs are completed at the end of the period. I will grade them actually a lot more frequently than every two weeks, but I will grade them of course. Having your lab notebook is required. If your lab is late, I will dock points. Here's all the things that I've mentioned before. Here's an example of a lab that's set up correctly. You can see the purpose there, how it's underlined, and you can see that this person had to show some circuit calculations. All the calculations are labeled with units. You can see that. Answers are boxed. 
all calculations shown, and the lab directions are followed. Here is an example of a diagram setup. You could see that the measurements are made here. All the fixed measurements are made, and there are arrows indicating motion. Um, please have that on all of your labs. Please tape your lab notebooks neatly. Make sure things are not glued together. As said, do, do not fold your papers. And here is again, don't squish your calculations, show your units. Here's another quick example. Organize, make sure that all of your information is appropriate, that you do not cut off your data tables, that they're not halfway on. Plan out your measurements. Use space, do not squish your tables or equations. If you have lines in your data tables, such as graphs or data tables, um, make sure they are straight lines. Use the edge of a notebook or use the edge of a ruler. Please make sure they are straight. You can see here someone actually typed them out, which is of course okay, but regardless it needs to be edged appropriately. Always make a scatter plot. Do not connect the dots. This is a best fit. Notice that it's not connected. And that is it. Thank you for participating in this video and how to set up your lab notebook.